answered a few questions as to how to account for long-term debt that's being refinanced. On December 31st, Cards Etc. had 1.2 million of short-term debt in the form of notes payable due on February 2nd, 2021. On January 21st, in order to ensure that it had sufficient funds to pay for the short-term debt when it matured, Cards Etc. issued 25,000 common shares for $38 per share, receiving 950,000 in proceeds after brokerage fees and other costs of issuance. On February 21st, the proceeds from the sale of the shares, along with an additional 250,000 in cash, were used to liquidate the $1.2 million debt, and the December statements were issued on February 23rd. So let's create a bit of a timeline here just to understand what dates are going on. So the first date that we have is December 31st. And this is the financial statement date. And they had 1.2 million of short-term debt in the form of notes payable. And again, so this December 31st and these notes are due on February 21st or sorry, February 2nd. So they're due in less than 12 months. So this would be a short-term obligation just right off the bat. And then we're gonna see what happens afterwards. So on January 21st, which is our next date, they, they issued shares and they got $950,000 for shares. Okay, and then on February 2nd, got an extra 250,000 of cash and the actual financials were, were issued on February. Okay. Where does this leave us for, for ASPI versus I for us? Which are the two requests in the question that we figure out how to account for these transactions or figure out what, what level of debt would be shown on the balance sheet classified in both short-term and long-term. So ASPE, which is the first request. So ASPE states that we have until the financial statements are issued to decide if the debt should be classified as short or long-term. So we know that originally the debt was classified as short-term. But then there were two transactions here that were used that add back to the 1.2 million. And ultimately the financials were issued after that. So one thing that's really important to remember under ASPE is that there still has to be debt of 1.2 million. All we're discussing is how it's classified. The actual debt itself existed at the statement of financial position date and it wasn't extinguished. So we're still gonna have debt on our balance sheet of 1.2 million. Now the question is what's long-term and short-term? So under ASPE, we're we are only allowed to show anything short term that is going to be settled out of current assets and that has been settled out of current assets as of the financial statement issuance date. So of these two transactions here, which of the two were out of current assets? Well, this cash we know is a current asset, but common shares are not a current asset. So ultimately, we're going to say that we know with hindsight, which ASPE allows us to use hindsight, we're going to have 250000 of this debt is going to be short term. And the reason for that is because it's settled from cash, it was settled from cash. And the remaining debt is going to be the 950000 because this did not requirement set, did not require settlement of current assets. This was settled in shares, which did not require a burden on our working capital. So ultimately under ASPE, we would have 250,000 as short-term and 950,000 as long-term. So you can see that we still add back to the 1.2 million of debt. What would IFRS say? IFRS is much easier because all IFRS says, IFRS says, forget about all this. This is what matters unless there was something negotiated as at that date that would require the debt to be uh, refinanced to be long-term. Anything that was financed after that date is irrelevant. So IFRS would simply say your short-term debt is going to be 1.2 million. 
Now companies want to show um, because various companies have different ratios, such as the current ratio that they may have to keep uh, up to certain levels to do with different bank covenant compliance, et cetera. Then some, sometimes companies are biased to want to show it as long-term. And so they're working hard to refinance that short-term debt into a long-term obligation. IFRS says, listen, that's great that you did those things after the fact, but as of the statement of financial position date, this is what was short-term. Therefore, that's what we're gonna record in the financial statements. 